bilateral, but uh, about the economic value of uh, ensemble predictions for uh, inflow management. This is uh, mainly the work of uh, Yona Zalakori, who did a PhD at FTA uh, uh, and um, in collaboration with Electricité de France, uh, so in France. Well, before just uh, 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 starting on the why we are doing that, there are two things that we have to have in mind about uh, who is concerned by reservoir management in hydrological applications. So operational hydrologists that are interested in forecasting uh, strong events like floods, for instance, for early warning and also for the operation safety and security of dams. And also planners that are searching to optimize the management of their resource and uh, uh, deal with uh, users and conflicts in a different time scales can be uh, at also space, different space scales, basing national, regional, and also longer time scales. We are here more concerned on the, um, uh, on the analysis of the benefits of using a medium range hydrological ensemble prediction, so up to seven days of lead time for reservoir management in a specific case of hydropower. So uh, EDF is a hydropower company, the major company in France. So we were focusing on um, the use of this uh, forecast in uh, hydropower. They have already, uh, uh, they are already running a system, an ensemble prediction system since uh, 2000, operational since 2008. And uh, the uh, question here was to try to transform this uh, benefits of ensemble predictions that they were already uh, conscious about that, but transform it into economic uh, uh, gains. How much do we gain by using ensemble predictions in hydropower? Uh, so we uh, were with this objective in mind, we, uh, and also with the, um, also we have to have in mind that we were looking for uh, a first experience with the economic value of this forecast. Of course, hydropower companies know that they can uh, have economic gains by using forecasts and water at longer term, at least. But we wanted to focus on this medium range forecast up to seven days. And we are also, uh, in order to better understand our methodology, we have to focus to understand that we are not focus, focusing on a specific catchment, but we are uh, rather trying to to get a picture of uh, this economic event. So we got the, uh, in terms of data, we worked with the ensemble prediction system from ECMWF, and we used it as input to a hydrological model called MODO. It's a, a model used by EDF. It's a lumped model based on reservoirs for the routing and the, the production and the routing functions. And then uh, we uh, worked with daily ensemble stream flow forecasts up to seven days ahead. And uh, with, uh, we developed a heuristic model for the operation of reservoirs and hydropower. And uh, we used the hourly European uh, energy prices, the EPEX spot prices, uh, for the period we were analyzing. This will give us then the, the value of the, of the, of the forecast. These are our data. In terms of uh, uh, methods, so I'm not going to describe the hydrological model, but rather the, the heuristic uh, model for reservoir operation that we developed. So it's a op kind of optimization tool, but based on uh, heuristic uh, rules. So you have as input the, the, the forecast, the discharge forecast up to day seven. Uh, our, the hourly prices of the energy market in euros per megawatt per hour are uh, in fact our objective function. We are going to, to research to uh, produce energy in the best hours uh, where the, high, the prices are higher so we can sell it for uh, more uh, economic value. And of course, in, it's an operation of a reservoir so we have to have constraints. And here we uh, simplified our system by using the maximum, the minimum capacity of the reservoir and the maximum capacity of the turbine. So all this, in fact, give us a management rule when we run through our data. And this management rule that is simplified by this graph on the right, uh, just for you to understand, is that we define when we are going to turn the turbines on or off. So they are on in the blue, um, dark blue, and they are off in the light blue. And you have in this curve the prices uh, for the next uh, seven days. 
the energy price. So you can see that we try to turbine when we have the higher prices and uh, stop the turbines when we have lower prices. This is the risk management rule. This is what we get from our from our model for this heuristic optimization. And then once we have this rule, of course, the, based on the forecast, we have to run the, the observation once the observation is available using the same constraints. And then we can get our actual reservoir management based on the reservations, of course. Operational uh, managers will act uh, according to the observations. And then we uh, evaluate our gain in, in monetary gain. Well, um, in this um, modeling that, like I told you, I would, uh, we wanted to apply to several uh, catchments, but we had to do some simplifications to be able to do that. So uh, we worked with um, actual inflows to our catchments. So these are predictions obtained with the ensemble forecasting system that I described uh, over the catchments. And in the reservoirs, we didn't work with uh, real values of capacity of these reservoirs. We didn't have this data anyway. But we uh, defined units of power production that were described by a capacity, the storage capacity. And this capacity is expressed in days of mean daily flow of the catchment. So we could manage also to evaluate the, the influence, the impact of these parameters in the gains. And uh, we also use the, the describe the reservoir by a turbine capacity, which is also related to the mean daily flow of the catchment. So we can also uh, kind of scale our problem to different uh, capacities. So here is just one the illustration for one day. We run our suit of uh, uh, models through four years, but this is just an illustration for one day, so you can probably, I hope, better understand how it was done. So suppose we have a date, 15th of September, so we have some predicting flow. This is a real catchment, as I told you. This is the Durant catchment at Southeast France. And we have this inflow for the next day. Here you have just for one single forecast, the single value forecast. So you have the inflow for the next seven days. And we uh, have the uh, time series of energy prices for also this week. We define a turbine capacity, for example, three times the mean daily flow of the catchment. And then uh, our um, here is optimization. You search the moments where we should turbine or not the volume. So we suppose that we want to use all this volume that is arriving to the reservoir so we can uh, end the period with the same uh, uh, level uh, as in the beginning. So we uh, define this rule in uh, dark blue where we have the moments where we are going to turn on the turbine. So uh, producing energy, energy sorry, at the highest uh, price. And then um, we have also the capacity of our reservoir here, for instance, four days of mean daily. Uh, in daily flow of the catchment. And you can see that using this heuristic uh, optimization, we have to also check for our constraints. Here you can see the, in red the evolution of the storage. So you can see there I'm, uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, going to, uh, up to the higher level of the capacity of my reservoir. It's not interesting for hydro power. They, want, they don't want to lose water. It means losing money. So what we do, what the model does automatically, is to try to adjust that by then accepting that we have to turbine with lower prices. So if I go back, I hope so, you can see that we had the defined to turbine at a threshold of the price at 103, for instance. And if we don't want to throw water away from the reservoir, but keep it to use it later, we have to accept to, uh, turbine at lower price, but at least we are going to use the whole uh, volume that is arriving to the reservoir. And this, in this case, we say, well, we have the constraints respected, and then we go on with the simulation. So this is what's just for one day. And of course, at the end of the day, we have the, the observed flows. We run the observed flows through the management rule for just 24 hours, and then we calculated the gain uh, in terms of euros. 
So, uh, so this is was for one day. We run that for uh, about four days, four years, sorry, 2005 to 2008, and 11 catchments. This is just for one catchment, and just show you that we uh, use this, uh, the fact that we have in this model some uh, flexibility to play with the, the capacitors, the turbine capacity and the reservoir capacity. So just for you to show that, well, the, the model follows the logic of that more uh, turbine capacity, so more gain, of course, the more I produce energy, more I can uh, get of money. And that also you can, uh, this capacity can increase um, uh, slower than the, the turbine capacity, but according to the reservoir capacity, uh, we are dealing with seven day flow. So of course it increases a bit up to seven days, but then becomes more uh, stable. And so if you pick up one of the, the one turbine capacity for uh, days of mean daily uh, flow, for instance, then we get what we wanted to learn at the end. Uh, the difference between the gains we can have according to the different types of forecasts. So uh, here we tested this, uh, I'm showing you this five ones. So you have uh, in the graph at the moment what I call uh, climatology, this uh, blue line uh, at the bottom, uh, it's uh, well uh, climatology in statistical sense because it's uh, uh, computed with a discharge, so it's an average discharge as forecast, average uh, um, computed over a long historic period. So it's climatology, but for hydrology, and uh, uh, we can see that well we don't have the lowest gains gains we can have because there is no forecast, just uh, average historic periods. And you have in the upper line uh, the observed flows. Uh, it means that I am using the, um, the observed discharge as forecast. So I'm kind of the, the perfect uh, scenario. So this is the maximum gain I can get anyway, according to how the modeling was done. And so we, what we wanted to know is what happens in between. So we run the, the, the deterministic ensemble forecast from CMWF, and this is the curve we got uh, at the end. We run also the average uh, of the ensemble, so the mean of the 50, uh, 50, 51 members of the ensemble, of EPS, and we run each member, so the whole ensemble forecast, and that's what the, the gain we got. So the idea was just to understand if we could get this also over all the crest catchments and to understand the, uh, have an idea of this gain uh, in terms of euros when we use a forecast and uh, uh, into the system. So in summary, we have uh, developed with this work an adaptable tool. There is not an um, optimization tool. It's a heuristic algorithm. It's a semi-optimized rules. But it allows us to, uh, let's say, play in research mode with our data and with our concepts. And we have used different inflow scenarios and different characteristics of reservoir and of the power production system. We have shown that we have some relative gains uh, when using meteorological ensemble forecast compared notably, for instance, to no forecast at all. So if you use only the climatological information from the uh, historic periods of the time series of discharge, and this can potentially result in average gains of 5%, which is over hundreds of millions of years, it can be very which can be very important for companies. Um, and in the further studies uh, that we had developed since then, uh, we uh, also uh, tested the impact of post-processing uh, forecast on this energy production. So our idea here is to uh, study the link between quality and the usefulness of this forecast. So um, we tested different um, uh, types of uh, qualities of uh, types of post-processing, so improving quality of ensemble predictions, how does it impact on the gain. And also something that we haven't yet developed further, but we plan to, is to improve also how to use the probabilistic information in the model. So for the moment, we're just running each ensemble member and averaging uh, the rule, but we would like to use probably other types of information of the quantiles or distribution information. Uh, I'd like to thank you in the name of also my colleagues uh, and also to draw your attention to the HIPEX website and that we have in, brought in uh, with Marie-Amélie Boucher, who is also a professor at the 
in Canada that works also with economic value. We have wrote in a blog on economic value. So you have all the four blogs on about econ blog posts on economic value. So you can just go to the the and select the category that interests you. You can see uh, and read more about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? For the first place? Okay. Back to the practical application for transfer. I understood that there are no stipulations of the rules of the data in the application that is only the use of the I would like just for your curiosity, when you have a slide that says you address the gain, but is the gain for the owner, I mean for the EDF or for the community that they pay less? <laughs> Not because that is important for the community. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if it's not just for the increase in the gain of the EDF, it's not the same interest. Well, uh, we ha this is the gain for the production side, of course, for the production company. Yeah, for the company, uh, and um, not in absolute terms, because as I told you, this is not a real optimization on real uh, characteristics of the systems. This, we couldn't have done that, at least not in research mode. We don't even have the data on these details. Uh, now, it's not a gain for society. Uh, we can suppose that more gain other power companies, it will be probably reflect in society, but that's not a linear like that. And especially, well, I think, uh, well, France is, uh, has a, a different uh, way of uh, dealing with energy and uh, uh, prices of energy for uh, the community. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, we have to stop here. We're going to have a conference right now. Before we conference, we're going to have a picture for you, please.